Hello and welcome to uh, Answer a Broadsheet Reader. My name is John Ryan with Broadsheet. Uh, with us this week is uh, American sports journalist, investigative journalist, uh, Irving Muchnick, to discuss uh, the uh, Olympic swimming coach, um, the Irish Olympic swimming coach, uh, George Gibney, and his, um, his fugitive status since uh, 1994. Uh, Irving is, uh, has been working in the field of sort of athlete sex abuse since about 2012, uh, working on the Penn State um, scandal. And he, he's done an incredible amount of work to obtain information about how George Gibney got into the States, how he um, continues to uh, evade justice or any sort of possibility of an extradition. But um, so welcome, Irving Muchnick. I hope that was a that introduction was 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 adequate. Yeah, very generous, John. Thanks for having me. Um, or, uh, there's a lot. Uh, Irving has written a, um, a ton of uh, stuff on Gibney since 2015. Uh, a lot of us that we have published. Um, he wrote a piece today um, in respect of the BBC Sounds Second Captains podcast called Where is George Gibney, which has been running for the last five weeks, is it, Irving? Five or six? I think number six just came out. Number seven is dropping this Thursday. Oh, I see. I, I, I thought it had concluded. Um, uh, podcast, which has been so widely acclaimed, uh, very popular podcast. Um, Irving will answer your questions around the podcast and around uh, Gibney himself. Uh, and Irving, we've got 30 minutes. I'm going to go straight into the questions, if that's okay. These are from broadsheet readers that uh, raised them, um, them today. Okay, so we'll go Very straight. Very good. Fire away. Okay. Uh, right. Right. So Irving, uh, Broadbag, uh, he's, uh, he or she is referring to the, um, you refer to the podcast as being slick and attention grabbing. Uh, Broadback writes, the unfortunate reality is that slick and attention-grabbing content like this is more likely to gain traction and get results than the tireless, detail-oriented, fact-based, investigative work that Irving has spent so long, selflessly doing for years of his life. See the likes of Making a Murder or Serial, for example. So if, if they can get the public behind them, they can gain a momentum that alone journalists simply cannot in this day of soundbites. I think Broadback's point is that no matter how much work you, you would have done, uh, Irving, you could never have... Uh, got the amount of attention that this BBC C Sounds podcast has got. No question. So, no question about it. And, 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 and to the extent that, uh, that this uh, production, inadequate though it may be in my eyes, uh, has put things over the top, uh, I'll tip my hat. Uh, I also think that there's, there's some very valuable stuff in this BBC podcast the oral history, the ability of some of the victims in their mind for the first time having a voice, and having a platform, that's valuable. What I object to about the BBC podcast is, is uh, the way they've, they've uh, built everything around an entirely contrived stakeout of Gibney. And uh, that is an element of broadcast journalism. RTE did it in 2006 when they Chase Gibney down in Calistoga, California, and uh, confronted him. And I understand that, but there's nothing happening here. This is not going anywhere as far as I can see. It's just kind of a contrived uh, 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 stakeout that's, that has no clear end. So that's one thing. My other objection to the podcast is that it's whitewashing the roles of police, government officials, swimming organizations, in both Ireland and the United States, there's ample opportunity in the course of the narrative they're telling to take some punches in those directions, and those punches are all pulled. So I don't see how it's advancing the scholarship of the Gibney story and the need to, if not bring Gibney to criminal justice, at least bring some accountability uh, to the story so that these kinds of things don't happen in the future. And that's the, that's the focus of my criticism. 
Okay, but you probably have to go back onto that now um, a little bit, touch back on, on that from, from, from the questions. Just the second part of that, as an aside, of, I've in the past work with, oh, sorry, no, sorry, I'll just go into that. It's just a bit sort of personal. Uh, Blonto writes, it's such a shame that the podcast couldn't, wouldn't collaborate with Irving. He's the center point of information on Gidney. While it's great that the victims get a voice, the main point of this case is not about where Gidney is, but how he was allowed into the US and he, how he managed to stay there. Uh, the massive reductions on Urban's uh, freedom of information re requests from 2017, isn't it, uh, Urban? The, uh, uh, the, the uh, settlement with the government was in December 2017, yes. Yeah. Um, the, the reductions added to the political interest from some, some on both sides of the Atlantic showed that this goes far beyond swimming. Keep pulling on that tre thread. One day we'll, it will all unravel. Um, Toe uprights have the second captain's team our Irving indicated why this didn't happen, why your cooperation with the, with the second captains and BBC Sounds didn't happen. Well, I've, John, I've written about as much as I think I need to write about why we didn't collaborate or work together in any form. First of all, it's their project, not mine. So they, and they did reach out to me, but they didn't reach out to me in, I think, a very uh, effective or constructive way. They basically wanted information from me uh, they didn't seem to have any uh, sense of, of the tremendous amount of investment I'd put in this over a period of years. And uh, I know as a freelance journalist that you get buried, what we call big-footed, by uh, larger news organizations that come in. And that's fine. Uh, they can do their thing and I'll do my thing. But uh, I was not persuaded by the overtures they made to me that there was going to be a a faithful uh, attempt to incorporate uh, the work that I had done. And I didn't have any control over the final cut and final edit. So I've published literally uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of words on the subject. I have primary source documents up at my website. Yeah, uh, anybody sorry. who is gonna, going to approach this subject without dealing with the output of my Freedom of Information Act case is obviously uh, doing a, a deficient job. And I think that's what's happening here. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I remember when we, we spoke when it started or when, when it was, there was rumors that it was going to happen, that the BBC were involved. And I, I felt uh, my heart sank when the BBC were going to be involved. And I, I, I didn't think that the, the threads that you had pulled over the years would come to light because they were too politically sensitive or too sensitive to people in Ireland and in America. Well, that, that seems to be the way it's played out, John. Unfortunately, I mean, we've, we've had no mention of the, uh, the conflict of interest at the Irish Supreme Court, whose Justice Denham heard the case that was argued by her brother, Gibney's lawyer, Patrick Ageby. We've had no coverage except in broadsheet of the fact that the uh, celebrated editor of the Irish Times through that period was the father of both of them, Douglas Gageby. They've, they've, they've gone to Colorado and have ignored two police reports on Gibney. Uh, they've, they've gone to Florida and talked about a Gibney's 1991 rape of a, of a swimmer on a training trip of his Trojans team. And they haven't uh, dealt at all with the uh, extradition issues and what's actually still could happen. And they've just sort of dismissed it. And okay. so the DPP in Ireland had no jurisdiction jurisdiction so and on and on and on so yeah. i'm very dissatisfied with the substance of uh, of this series yeah that, i mean they, they, they revisited it in 2004 so the, the jurisdiction wasn't an issue back then either i mean 1996 and 2004 on both occasions they they considered uh, those um those allegations and they Right. Well, as to the extradition, as to the uh, jurisdiction issue, I should say, if if it, if jurisdiction was the problem when Susan, the pseudonymous uh, victim of the uh, rape in in 1991, if that was a problem in in 2006 when she she and and other swimmers, three or four other swimmers on the uh, Trojans team, uh, raised fresh allegations in Guardy and Black Rock County, Dublin investigated in 2006 if if uh uh and, and i may have the dates wrong i think it's actually a 1996 excuse me yeah, 1996. If, 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 if at that period 
jurisdiction was the problem for Susan. It wasn't the problem for the other swimmers, number one. Number two, if it was a problem for Susan in 1996, why did the DPP take up the matter again in 2004? And I believe on two other occasions at least, as far as I know, there's an ongoing DPP review of the Gibney cases at the behest of now retired TD Maureen O'Sullivan that started in 2015. So I don't think jurisdiction is the problem. And then the final thing is, to the extent that jurisdiction is a problem, I did reporting in 2018 following my Freedom of Information Act settlement with the US federal government, uh, in which the Hillsborough County prosecutor in Florida acknowledged that there is no statute of limitations bar to prosecuting Gibney in the United States. But what has to happen is that the uh, police and prosecutors in Ireland and the United States have to coordinate their information under a European Union treaty that sets out protocols for doing that. And as far as I know, that hasn't happened. And it can happen as long as the only person writing about it is little old me at a little old website called Concussion Inc. I would like it a hand from the BBC and from other major players in the uh, Anglo-Irish and American media. Pardon me, ma'am. I don't want to hurry you, but we, we, we only have 30 minutes. So, um, quoting from the post, where is George? Uh, this is from your article. Um, oh, no, that's okay. We'll get back to that. It's not a, it's a, it's a, hi, Irving. Well done on, on, the, on the, the, all the work today. What's the latest on the case from your understanding? If Gibney lied in his immigration application, would ICE not intervene? This is the immigration um, service in, in America. Uh, would not intervene. All I hear about, all I ever hear about them is their cavalier gung ho approach to the type of person they can kick out of the states. Do you think they have any evidence to suggest there is still active pressures in Irish sport? Are the new or still part of the organisations? What details of any can you share at this point? If so, well, just be careful on that. If you if you are uh, just on this. Um, Judge Breyer, in your case, uh, said we don't export, or we don't import pedophiles from Ireland. Uh, I, we're not here to import your pedophiles. Isn't that, isn't that the, the, right, right. There's, there's a bunch of complicated things uh, 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 packed into the, that question. Uh, but, but as far as ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, the catch-22 of the Gibney story is that he, he uh, was rejected in applying for American citizenship in 2010, evidently because he didn't disclose on his immigration, on his, uh, his uh, uh, citizenship application that he had a criminal arrest and indictment in Ireland. So for that reason, he couldn't become a citizen, but perversely, ICE decided that they couldn't kick him out either because he'd never been convicted of anything. What Judge Breyer was saying is when you make a material lie to the federal government, there should be consequences. There are citizens who have their passports pulled when they, don't make, when they make false representations to the government. So what's going on here? Be that as it may, there is a current investigation of Gibney and it doesn't have to do with discrepancies in his paperwork. It has to do with the possibility that while he was, he's been a guest in the United States, he went down to Peru as head of a Catholic parish sponsored children's medical mission and something nefarious happened down there. I do know that that's an investigation. It has not been closed. It's being conducted by the Justice Department money laundering asset uh, recovery section, if I have the uh, acronym right. Uh, and, and, and the person uh, conducting the investigation is a human trafficking finance specialist, and it's an offshoot of a federal grand jury investigation of USA Swimming for covering up abuse cases and for insurance fraud and asset hiding. Yeah. So there's, there's, there, the Gibney investigation is alive. Again, I'm the only person really reporting it, which is very unfortunate. Everybody wants to be defeatist and wring their hands and say, what can we do? It's over. He got away with it. Not necessarily so, but uh, I'm just one voice in this. Okay. Um, just going to get you back to the, to the questions. 
second. Um, Moon Safari says, I'm, oh yeah, sorry, there was a question about, uh, did you ask for remuneration money from second captains? Oh, that's ridiculous. I, I didn't ask for remuneration. They, they, they offered me, Maria Horgan, Mark Horgan's sister said, we'll pay you $500 for an interview. I said, well, you know, that's $500 for five years of work and taking on for the federal government is kind of ridiculous. How about a thousand? She said, no. She said, we'll devote one episode of the podcast just to your work. And I didn't want to do that either because it's not about me, number one. And number two, I had no confidence that, uh, that they were going to uh, faithfully uh, record my work. It's not, not make me look like some kind of, uh, some kind of eccentric, uh, or, or, and, and, uh, so I, I was not interested in that proposition. I said, you do your thing, I'll do mine. And, uh, I'm critiquing what they're doing on that basis. Okay. Um, Moon Safari writes, I'm a sub subscriber to the second, second captain's podcast. And the way they, they've been pro promoting this series hasn't really sat well, hasn't sat well with me at all. They seem to be relying on the details of what Gibney did to his victims, using them in promotional clips rather than focusing on the investigation into Gibney and the culture that allowed him to evade justice. Um, he quotes from your article, Exploited and Foul Ernest, just about sums it up. The, um, this is another one in the same kind of vein. Thanks for the hard work you've done best in this urban. I've read a lot of it over the years. I understand your frustration. Justin McCarthy has um, McCarthy has written well, very well on this subject too. She's the author of Deep, Deep Deception, 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 Deep Deceptions, um, uh, which brings them all together, all the swimming, all the coaches, and Justine McCarthy, in, indeed, along with Johnny Watterson, uh, has done some phenomenal uh, 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 foundational work on the Gibney story. Yeah. And I salute both yeah. of them. Now, Justine's most recent piece in the Sunday Times was about how Don Dupont, the eccentric uh, 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 felon murderer of uh, wrestler Dave Schultz, as portrayed by Steve Carell in the movie Foxcatcher, actually visited Gibney's uh, pool in, uh, uh, at, at the uh, New Park School in Black Rock years ago, and it's captured in a new documentary about Dupont. So instead of where is George Gibney, we know where George Gibney is. I'd like somebody to start answering the question, where is Peter Banks, George Gibney's old assistant, who's now coaching in Florida. He's bounced back and forth from Florida to Ireland. He was a, on the staff of the American Swimming Coaches Association, which might have engineered Gibney's relocation to the United States and the offer of a coaching position in Colorado which collapsed uh, almost immediately in the mid 90s. There's just a lot of, of, of additional reporting that nobody is doing on, on the surrounding narrative of George Gibney's flight from justice. Yeah, and the, 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 the podcast itself, what, what, what I think the reader was asking earlier was just saying that now everybody knows about Gibney, so it makes your job a lot easier in the sense of It'll open a few more doors. Oh, we know this guy. We know that guy. Or... One can hope. I mean, so somebody said to me on Twitter yesterday, I find the uh, testimony of the victims very moving, and I hope some good comes from it. And uh, I said, uh, don't we all? Uh, uh, but, I, but, but it would be nice if, uh, if, if as powerful a platform as the BBC would do some actual journalism in addition to just... Uh, uh, having this uh, phony contrived stakeout of George Gibney and these long, long interviews across, I think, a, like a total of, t of uh, five hours of, uh, of radio without doing any uh, uh, probing of, uh, of official investigations or of the status of, uh, of Gibney uh, right now. Okay, uh, the, the article that you wrote today, this is, it was before, it was out, you, you'd listened to, Five, six of the podcasts. Six, Correct. Six, six episodes. Um, there was uh, criticism on, on, online regarding a passage from it. Um, can I just read it to you? Sure. Yeah. Um, the sad bottom line of this podcast series 
has become clearer and clearer. The Horgan crew appear to have no desire to use their platform to assist in a global reckoning for the abuses of an Olympic sports system that turns millions of kids in extracurricular activities into vessels of our, of our bread and circuses fantasies, while covering up the worst outcomes, many of them heinous. In the interview of Susan's sister, she betrays this superficiality. The tragedy of her siblings' ruined lives is, of course, that Susan, following, following multiple suicide attempts, would turn into would turn into a mental patient who required institutionalization. But the other tragedy is the one about how the evil coach, coach dashed to families' dreams of Olympic glory, Susan's directly, and their parents vicariously. It came under some strong criticism today, Irving Online. Uh, could you? Yeah, I'm not going to win any Miss Congeniality awards for my for my uh, criticisms of the youth sports system, for which a lot of us, from a lot of different angles, not just the individual perpetrators of abuse, uh, have some ownership of. And, and I say this as somebody who's covered abuse in, in swimming for uh, going on nine years now, and I know that it's a global problem, it's an international problem. There's Gibney, there's a, a uh, Danny Chacron, who jumped bail in Florida and is still coaching in Venezuela. There's uh, Sean Hutchison, the groomer and abuser of gold medalist Ariana Cookers, who's bounced to Brazil. There's uh, Rick Curl, who's, who was covered up for years by USA Swimming and spent some time in Australia before he finally got busted. So uh, we need to uh, take a hard look at the structure of our youth sports programs and how they re rely on economies of scale for lots of swimmers at all levels to, uh, to support getting a few people uh, sent to the Olympics every four years in a patriotic spectacle for a fortnight on national television. And that's what, I, that's what dissatisfies me about some of the, the ways that they cover the, uh, the uh, accounts of families. Uh, I have great sympathy for them. Nobody's judging them. The victims themselves have PTSD and they've gotten no satisfaction from the system. But I insist on being a cultural critic as well as an investigative reporter, even if the sharpness of my language doesn't go down well with some readers. Yeah, well, it's, um, okay. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't really, I, I, I don't want to sort of add to any, or sort of make up a kind of foul controversy. Just to sort of reiterate though, I mean, you, feel, you felt that the, the podcast exploited the, the, the sporting dashed hope. Yeah, look, I don't, care, I don't care how good a swimmer Susan was. I don't care how pretty she was. She was a rape victim. I don't really care. I, I don't mind it being in the background, but I don't like it being in the foreground when they have no information about the investigation of Gibney are being told what a horrible thing it was because she dreamed of going to the Barcelona Olympics, I think it was, and that didn't happen, and the whole family had invested in it. I think we find this time and again in these horrible, tragic stories of victims of, of coach abuse that they that they don't they don't realize what's wrong with the system until the worst happens within their own families. And I think we need to have a broader conversation about the way very young people who aren't even consenting uh, uh, spend so much time outside of their, uh, their families with these Svengali authority figures. And then when bad things happen, we act shocked. We need to be addressing the American, uh, uh, the Swim Island program. We need to be addressing USA Swimming. We need to be addressing the American Swimming Coaches Association, which has as its business model getting visas so these bad guys can cross national borders. And we have ASCA saying they have no responsibility for children in any way, shape, or form when 90% of the aquatics industry is teaching swimming to and coaching young people. The whole system is rotten and outrageous, and that's what we need to be talking about, not these titillating details about an individual victim. Okay. 
and on the chance of an extradition, how do you how likely is that in your mind? I think it's very unlikely because the will doesn't seem to be there. People would rather turn the page and and I think there I think that the the facts and the predicate for an extradition are there. It just takes some work. I mean, Cong uh, T. D. O'Sullivan, while she was here in 2018, talked to Congresswoman Jackie Speer in yeah. the United States, but I don't think Congresswoman Speer did anything. She referred it to the House Judiciary Committee. What we need to do is we need to get pressure from the media and from citizens in Ireland and the United States on their politicians to knock the heads together of the Garda and the U.S. Justice Department the DPP and the Hillsborough County prosecutor in Florida share information, figure out how we can still thread the needle on some kind of indictment or criminal action against Gibney to bring satisfaction to his victims. But also to, to talk about how the ball was dropped over the years, over the course of a quarter century, 30 years, by criminal justice people and sports organizations in both countries. So it doesn't happen again. On the, on the wider global issue, uh, Irvin, do you think it's globally connected or do you think it's just like separate pedophile rings? It's absolutely or? globally co connected, uh, John. Uh, Peter Banks, who was Gibney's assistant, was in Florida and then working for the American Swimming Coaches Association went back to become the head of Swim Ireland for a while. Yeah. And, and there was an increase in clinics and, and activities by the American Swimming Coaches Association in Ireland. And now he's, he's, he's back over here. Uh, he's been, a, he's been a, a, an Irish coach. He's been on the American Olympic swimming team. That is Peter Banks. Yeah. Uh, he's an American yeah. citizen. Uh, as I said, there's a, a, a Danny Chacrone from U.S. to Venezuela. There's Sean Hutchison from the U.S. to Brazil. There's Rick Curl from the U.S. to Australia and back. And there's Gibney from, from uh, Ireland to the U.S. Uh, these things are all connected and there, there is a global swimming governance system that just doesn't care about young people. Okay, Irving, we've literally run out of time. Thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight. Um, it would be great to have you back again, maybe to go through some of these these issues because uh, you know you've 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 raised you've got me thinking again about it. I mean, the thing about these stories is they're they're completely thankless, really. In the end, at the end of the day, and you get more kind of stick than any kind of praise, but. Uh, they tend to have kind of they they, they go to, go to quiet for a while and then they come back to life and I do feel that there's there's something there's this is, we've not heard the last of this at all by any means. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate the forum, Don, and I appreciate all the work that Broadheed is doing, covering the peripheries of 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 this story like no one else in Ireland, and and I hope more people uh, read up on it and do something about it. And thanks for having me. Not at all, Irving. And uh, BBC Sounds podcast, Second Captains, uh, I'll put it in the description. Irving, thank you so much for joining us and uh, thank you for uh, answering a broadsheet reader. Till next time.